Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Adeleke. I'm a third year medical student at UMDN JSOM. Uh, I go to a DO school. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, viscerosomatic reflexes. This is extremely high yield on the complex. Believe it or not, if you're a DO student and you're taking the complex, 20% of the complex exam basically you're gonna see this stuff. You know, you study your first day, you memorized it. That's all great and good, but guess what? I got news for you. OMM, as we all know, 20% of the entire board exam, uh, you can't do without it. What I realized is many students uh, like me that had to take the test was um, you gotta memorize these things kind of like last minute. And <laughs> you know how it is. It's pretty tough. Like. Uh, but first of all, let, let's talk a little about OMM. You know, for some people that don't know what OMM is all about, it's osteopathic manipulative treatment in which you're able to apply a force, which whichever, which is direct or indirect, kind of like muscle in, in form of muscle energy or counter strain or HVLA to a patient. And uh, usually it's kind of skeletal, musculoskeletal dysfunction. However, OMM is more than that. As we all know, you know, we have, you know, cranial treatments, thoracic, uh, you know, we have uh, muscular, other musculoskeletal treatments we can use, uh, vertebrae and whatnot. That's attached, you know, extra uh, training we all get as DO students. And uh, that's what makes us special. Now, other than that, you know, the way you approach patients as human beings as a whole, not looking at them at, uh, from a symptomatic uh, point of view, like think them a disease process, like, oh, look at that guy had like diabetes, you know, like, that's like a wrong way of looking at a patient, you know, you're a physician and your presence should be making a difference in the life of a patient. So uh, that being said and done, I'm going to give you a quick review on visceral somatic reflexes. High yield, you know for sure you're going to get this on the comic. You can't get around it. So I notice, you know, everybody reads Savarese, the little green book. Uh, everybody has that. You know, you try to memorize it and you're like, oh man, I got, I got T1 to the bow. I see T10, I got the dang code, baby, but you know what? I just can't get this. Which one is the ureters? Which is the T10 to this? Guess what? That's why I'm here, guys. All right, so let's get to the meat and the bread and butter of this business. Okay, remember 20%? Remember, you know what that can make you score? You get probably like a 500 to a 600, easy. If you get 20% of the questions right, which is just one of the questions. And, you know, you know, I'll, you know typically they ask you a question and try to like, where are you going to find this function? For example, let me give you a perfect question. A 23-year-old African-American or Caucasian-American guy comes to your office. He's covering like this cough, short of breath. You touch on his chest. You're like, oh, wow. It hurts a little bit right here. Right in the intercostal space. You're like, um. And do you know what the national board is going to be like? Since he's short of breath, we don't really care much. How about you tell me where you're going to find a visceral somatic dysfunction in this guy? She's like, you're just kidding me, right? You're not going to ask me a question about COPD? Really? Alright, you know how it is. It's T2 to T7. So I'm just going to kind of give you the, you know, the rough estimate. Remember, this um, thoracic levels are not really 100% accurate. You know, there's always variation from uh, one author to another. But, you know, typically I'll say um, about T1 to T4, uh, that would take care of head stuff, right? Everything from your head, from sinusitis, from a little upper respiratory infection, a little periorbital cellulitis, you know, that kind of job. Uh, and about T1 to about T5 will take care of your heart. Remember, um, you know, all your thoracic is right all the way from T1 all the way to T12. So, that'll take care of that. You know, stuff like T2 to T7, that should take care of the lungs, right? Easy, right? I mean, come on. Usually, what would they, the question would be like, which, where are you going to find this uh, visceral somatic dysfunction? Oh, by the way, my fault. I know. I'm jumping at it. I guess I'm too excited about this. But anyway, visceral somatic, like the visceral organ, right? Somatic body. So if there's a dysfunction in your organ, for example, if something's wrong with your lung, I say the guys, what? Have shorter breath. You're like, oh, man. Then it's going to refer pain. To between what? T27. So the answer is probably going to be between T27. So on the test, you probably see something like a T4, you know, or T5, you know. But trust me, other options are going to be like L1, L2, S3, and you're going to be like, oh man, I just wish I knew this, right? So T2 to T7, you know that's your lungs, right? So that's not that bad. And you know, your SMA, your superior mesenteric artery fits your foregut, right? Which is in between about T. 
70T9, right? I'll say your foregut. That's, you know, uh, your esophagus also. I might want to just toss that in there. So it's about T2 to T8. Kind of roughly, right? It makes sense. It's about T2 because your sternum notch is going right down like T2, right? Yeah, remember that? Good. Right? Esophagus. So just kind of put that in there so you guys can remember. But the bottom line is T2 to T7 to T9 and T10 to T11. Kind of your mid gut area. You know, you know, your, your little one. Actually, apologize for that. Your foregut is uh, supplied by the celiac artery. <laughs> That's the silly truck, my fault. But you know your um, mid gut, right? So you guys can see that. And you know, the rest, you know, you take care of that about T12 to about L, um, let's see, T11, T12 to about L1, L2, roughly. The, 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 the uh, hind gut, which is supplied by inferior mesenteric artery, which is, you know, this is like a good ballpark. You can memorize it, but guess what? It's the little gonads, the uterus, the ovaries, man, it drives me nuts. So, that, you know, I kind of went over that because it's just a quick review. But, uh, um, why don't we go to why we're here today, okay? Because everybody can memorize it. This is where I think this, re this review is going to help you. So, let's go between T10 and about L2. Uh, so, the first thing I would just practice this and guess what? It comes in naturally. This is just a piece of cake. You draw this on your exam, I bet you're going to knock out that 10. Check this out. So you draw a line, right? Uh, I draw a line right from about, just a straight line, you know, this is like algebra, basic stuff. And as long as you know the number, you're good. So I'll say T10 and L2. Nothing too fancy, you know, so you guys can see L2 and T10. Okay, you see that? Now all I want you to do is break the line into two and tie T11. <laughs> It can't get better than that. Can you number 10, 11, or 12? Exactly. That's what I thought. And just right in here also, I just want you to write about T12. So 10, 11, and 12. The whole point of this exercise is I want to show you this. This is really hot. And I bet you it's going to be cute by the time I'm done. Uh, you don't know what I'm talking about. Yet. Check this out. So between T10 and T11, some guys just fall in between there. So I call them guck. It's kind of suck, but at least. Med students, what do you think? Gun lever? Exactly. So I'm using the money guck. You could call it cog, whatever. But the point of the fact is, it's G for your gonads. So that would be your ovaries, your uh, testes. Cover. You, guess what? It's upper ureters. And the kidneys. Bam! You just knocked about one, two, three, four out easily. T10, T11. Are we on point? Great. Now, the next thing I want you to do is between this guy all the way to L2. You guys see that? In my school, we have PBL. They call them public enemies or something. I don't know. They're usually called private based learning. So, somehow, some of that new money kind of works. So, I call them PBL. Please be loud if you want. So P, we stand for your penis, right? B for the bladder, and L is going to go for your legs. Oh my God, you're kidding me. So you're just telling me from T11 to L2, the penis is involved, right? The, the bladder and the legs. Perfect. I think we're almost done here, right? The last is just right at the bottom here. If you just can squeeze in prostate, I will be happy with you. Didn't I tell you it's gonna come out cute? You guys don't believe me. Right here, all the way, baby. It's cute. You're like, it's cute. Yeah, it's cute. You know why it's cute? Cause C is for the cervix and U T E is for the uterus. So this is actually cervix and U T is the uterus. How can you not like that? See, so I see a little kid, like, oh, that's so cute. Yeah, it's really cute, but you know what's cute on the complex? It's T10 to L2. So you know, they'll tell you, oh, it's this 31-year-old um, woman. She's having vaginal bleeding. She's bleeding. Man. And you like, you look at her cervix, and bam, you find these atypical cells. They got this coleocytes, and you're like, no, what, is that? what, what can that be? 
You think, oh my goodness, could it be cervical cancer? Man, is that the squamal columnar junction? Yeah, it is the squamal columnar junction, and it's right as it. But the complex is like, we know you know that. See now, the question is, where are you going to find a visceral dysfunction? You're like, no, you guys suck. And like, you know what? You suck too. Because I know it's cute. Got it? Peace. So, now we went over visceral somatic dysfunctions. You can nail them down. You memorize those first T1 to T1 knot I just told you about. You knock it out. Alright? So, next time... I'll talk to you guys about some other topics. Uh, this is just to kind of cover the visceral somatic, which I know a lot of students are having problems on, on the complex. I mean, it drives everybody crazy. Your first year of medical school, you're like, oh my God, do I have to know that crap? I made it a little easier, right? So you just practice this guck, PBL. Plus a little process, right? You know, the question, you know how this is going to come out, right? It's going to be another guy, 72-year-old, comes in to the hospital. You're like, oh man, you know what? It's been complaining, it's having problems with you. When you urinate, he pees, the pee comes out a little bit, it's not a lot. Then it stops and you feel like it's gotta go, it's gotta go, it keeps going. You're like, man, this guy got some kind of urethritis or some kind of bladder UTI. You no, know, it's common with women, but guys can get it, you know. And you're like, hold up, let me do a digital rectal exam. You stick your finger up in there, and man oh man, you feel this thing kind of a little bit hard. You're like, uh oh. Then you're like, you know what? I think it could be prostate cancer or see if it's an anatomic carcinoma, what can it be, right? BPH? Baby, you guys got BPH. Then you're like, oh, okay, let me check a PSA. PSA comes about about five. Normal is zero to four. So you say, hmm, this guy's got some BPH, I think. So, but the comment is, no, we know that. Tell me what dysfunction is going to be. You're like, no, don't do that. Then they toss this in there, where are you going to find the dysfunction? You're like, come on, give me a break. And they put the answer, it's going to be between T12 and L2, something they'll probably put L1. That's the answer, guys, because the next options are not going to match, okay? All right, I hope you guys like this quick review. Next time, I'll be right back. Maybe some liver function tests, talk about some diabetes, ketoacidosis, a little bit about the brachial plexus, you know, stuff like that get you guys all excited, okay? All right, this is Think Positive Incorporated, CEO in the building. I'll see you guys later. Peace.